Hi, welcome to the virtual orientation for the J-Flight 32BHDS by Jayco. We're going to begin the video on the outside of the RV and we're going to begin near the front. First thing that we will look at is your front pass-through storage compartment. Some of the things that you will find in here are the base and mounting arm for your Blackstone grill. Uh, the Blackstone grills are still on back order, but once they get them, you will be able to get yours. So this receiver post will go into this receiver here. The propane is connected via this quick connect port here. And the valve to open and close, that's closed, is right here. Also inside the front pass-through compartment, you'll find your 30 amp power cord to connect to the campground power. Uh, most of us do not have a 30 amp receptacle on the outside of our home, so we also provide you with a conversion block to convert this plug into a 50 amp receptacle that you will be able to use on the outside of your home. You won't be able to power your air conditioner with that, but you should be able to run all your lights and uh, do most things that you would need to do. Also in this front compartment, we have your manual cranks for both your stabilization jacks and your electric tongue jack. Speaking of the stabilization jacks, we have four of these located at the four corners of the RV. They should never be used to level your RV. The RV should be fully level and these should just be snugged up to, to either the ground or your blocking. Uh, you would need to use some blocking if your ground that you're attempting to camp on is not level and the travel of the uh, jack is extended past its uh, maximum capacity. Usually we'd recommend 6x6s. Six six they seem to be the best bang for your buck as far as your blocking goes. Before we go around to the, the front, we'll just make note of the extra wide uh, body here on the side marker light. There's one on the off door side as well. This is a housing for a side view camera. The side view camera is not included, but can be purchased at an extra cost. These cameras, both the side view cameras and the rear view camera, can be monitored via a head unit that is plugged into the uh, 12 volt system of the tow vehicle. That way you can monitor all sides of the vehicle while in transit or while you're stationary. As we come around to the front, we'll make note of your battery storage area, as well as your propane storage here. You see it comes with this hard cover with an access panel at the top. So you don't have to take the bottles all the way off each time. You will see we have two 30 pound bottles connected via a crossover regulator. So on cold nights, if you have your furnace running, the regulator handle is pointing to this tank. It will draw from this 30 pound bottle. In the event that this bottle drops below a predetermined amount of pressure, and that pressure is determined by the regulator and isn't adjustable. Once it drops below a predetermined amount of pressure, it will automatically cross over and draw from this bottle regardless of which direction the handle is pointing. So you don't have to get out on the cold nights and switch the bottles over manually. Directly in front of the propane storage, we have your electric tongue jack. A couple things to note here. One being this rubber plug on the top. Once that is removed, it'll give you access to the nut that you can put the manual crank on that I showed you in the front pass-through storage compartment. That way you can always raise and lower the tongue, whether you have power or not. Also worth noting on the front here, we have your safety breakaway cable. The loop end is attached to the tow vehicle, and the other end is attached to the pin that is fully seated in the housing here on the trailer end. In the event that the tow vehicle and the RV are separated, this pin will be pulled free from the housing and engage the trailer brakes. I have had it noted to me that on a couple of occasions that this gets stepped on or pulled uh, during your hitch up uh, and the pin has been pulled partially free of the housing but not fully free. Uh, however, it was enough to engage the brakes 
Um, so if you do find that you have your brakes engaged and they, uh, you don't feel they should be, just uh, come here and make sure that the pin is fully seated into the housing so that the brakes aren't engaged unless intended. As we continue to move our way along the outside of the RV, we'll just make note of your extra loading light here in the front, as well as the off-door pass-through storage access. And we'll just make another note of the camera body and housing, as I mentioned on the door side, for your side view camera. As we continue along the outside of your RV, the next thing we'll come to that we're going to talk about is the outside access for your hot water heater, right above your outdoor shower, which is above your city water connection. We also have in this area your 30 amp connection point on the trailer side. This is where you can connect the trailer end of the 30 amp cable that I showed you previously. As far as the city water connection goes, this is the connection point that you would use to connect the garden hose either from the campground to your house. Um, and once you turn the tap on, it will pressurize the uh, water system inside the RV, just like the water system of your home. And you can use it as such. Not really any difference once you have the air out of the system and the system fully pressurized, you can turn the tap on and use it just like you would at home. The outside access to your water tank. A couple things to note here is your drain and the drain cap, as well as your pressure relief valve. It's important to always relieve the pressure and leave the valve open while you're uh, attempting to remove the drain plug. Otherwise, there's a lot of pressure built up inside the tank that will force this cap off once you get to the end of the threads. It'll come shooting off at you pretty hard, so. And then right next to the outside access to your hot water tank, we have your black tank flush valve. This is what you would use to connect a garden hose to your black tank in order to flush it out, clean it out, help get rid of some debris. However, before connecting the water to the system, always make sure that the output of your tank, which is here, is connected to the sewage system of the campground or wherever it is that you're disposing of the sewage. Uh, once that is connected to the waste system, you will want to pull the valve handle, ensure that the valve handle remains open and that you remain connected to the sewer system. Once you've done that, then you can connect your water source, your garden hose to the flush valve and turn on the water. Always make sure that you're connected to the sewage system with that black water valve open before you turn the water on to the black tank flush. Continue along the outside of the RV. The next thing we'll make note of is your uh, gray water output right here. You have your new sewer hose and the bumper. And just before we come along to the back wall of the RV, we'll make note of the input for your cable or satellite TV. On the back here, we'll make note of your ladder access to the roof, as well as the housing for the pre-wired rear view camera. As I mentioned with the side view cameras, it is an extra that can be purchased separately, and we'd be happy to help you with that. Come along to the outside of the RV, to the door side again, and in your outdoor kitchen you have a sink, you have lighting, you have night lights that don't attract the bugs, you have a 120 volt power source, as well as this refrigerator. As we come along to your awning, we'll point out your under awning speakers. Those can be used inside the RV with the stereo and we'll show you that in a minute. Also here, you'll see that we have the venting for your refrigerator. It's important that this venting remains obstruction free at all times as it is necessary for the proper functioning of the refrigerator. Also on this side, you see we have a vent for your, your range hood. And this venting can be closed. 
So before using the range hood, always make sure you leave this open. When not in use, make sure you click it closed. And as we pan down, the next thing we'll come to is your freshwater input. You'd use your freshwater tank if you were camping somewhere off grid where you didn't have a water source, or if you were camping at a campground that did not have a potable water supply. You can fill the freshwater tank via this point here before you leave on your trip, and then draw from the tank to pressurize your water system via the onboard water pump. Also underneath here we have your output for your cable or satellite as well as the mount and the 120 volt power allowing you to enjoy your TV underneath your awning. Now let's go inside and we'll take a look and see what we have. First thing through the door, if we turn back around and look down, we'll notice the fire extinguisher for the unit. It's always important to know where your safety equipment is and this is an important piece of your safety equipment. I like the placement just inside the door. It gives ready access uh, for anybody cooking outside. However, it is readily accessible for anyone inside as well. Right next door to that, we have your carbon monoxide propane detector. Your carbon monoxide propane detector should be tested every so often. I usually recommend testing it when you test your fire extinguisher or your smoke detector, sorry. So there's a button right here. You can see the green light right there. That's to indicate that the system is functioning. If you press this button, it'll issue a series of loud beeps. This the green light will go to red. Once the noise is done and the green light should go back to being a solid green color, it would indicate then that the system is good and ready to use. One thing to note with these is that they can be triggered most notably by paint fumes. So just keep that in mind if you are doing any painting. So we did mention your smoke detector right here as we recommend that you test this carbon monoxide propane detector. It's always easier to remember if you do it with your smoke detector as the common knowledge would say that you test your smoke detector every six months or during daylight savings time. So it's always good practice just to go ahead and test that carbon monoxide propane detector at the same time. Before we move any further into the main area of the RV, let's step into the bedroom. It has some under bed storage, as well as 120 volt power on either side of the bed. We also have some over bed lighting here. One over each side of the bed. And we also have this feature here where we have this mirror. I'll show it more on the other side as it's easier to see. So just let me walk around to the other side. If you open both doors, you have this lock here. This lock can be removed and then this whole thing will pivot. And why does it pivot? What does it do? Well, it flips around and lets you watch the TV on the inside of the. So it's kind of a neat feature. It allows you to have a nice mirror in your bedroom, which helps with the lighting, but it also acts as a TV for your bedroom. That way you don't have to have two separate TVs. You just simply spin it around and it's pretty easy to do. Pretty handy feature, I like that a lot. We'll just close up both doors. Both doors do need to be open in order to turn the TV around to face the bedroom. So before we leave the bedroom here, we'll make note of a couple things. One being the emergency exit. In order to utilize this, you'd push down on the black handle, push the red handle over and out, bring it perpendicular to the side wall of the RV, push it straight out of the window. Once it's fully outside the window, grab the red tab and pull the screen free and you may escape to safety. Now directly above this, 
we have your pre-wired location for your pre-wired solar. Now this is where you would put the head unit, uh, basically the monitoring panel for the solar system. All the wires are inside the wall, so it should make it easier to, uh, to install the head unit. This is an extra, is not included, but can be purchased here if you would like. So let's make our way into the main portion of the RV. We'll take a look around. Some of the main things that we're going to talk about are in this area. Some of the important things. We have your range top here. It's pretty simple to light. Put it to the light position. Turn the sparky knob. We have flame. You do the same thing for each one. Nice pretty blue flame. Excellent. You do the exact same thing for the bottom. Make sure the door is open before you attempt to light. Turn it to the light position. The only extra thing you're going to do is you have to press and hold the knob in while you turn the sparking knob. And an extra note to mention, always, I did it automatically, but always, always, always remove the glass by opening it fully before you attempt to light anything on your range top here. Now, if you're just using the system, you haven't been camping and you're going to use the system for the first time or for the first time in a while, uh, it's always easier to light your other appliances if you uh, kind of bleed the system of any air with these top burners first. And when I say bleed, you don't have to sit there with them open or anything. Simply just light your top burners. That will get rid of any of the air out of the system, bring the gas to this point in the system and help build up that gas pressure. So when it comes time to light your fridge or your hot water tank, they should light the, on the first attempt. So before we move on, we'll drop below your uh, oven here and we'll just take a look at your, your uh, load center. This is where you're going to find the breakers, much like you'd see in your home and they operate the same way, as well as your fuses, like you might see in your vehicle and again they operate the same way. You will see a red LED light that lights up beside the fuse if there is something not functioning properly with the circuit. If we swing just to our left here, underneath your sink, we're going to notice that we have your water pump. Now I've previously removed this panel that normally would sit kind of like this. There's two Red Robertson screws that I removed in order to get access to this in order to show you that there is this valve here. At the moment, this pump is set to draw from the fresh water tank that I talked a bit about outside. Um, if you wish to winterize yourself, which we do have a separate video for that, you need to turn this valve so it is set to draw from this fill tube, such as it is now. Okay, before we... Uh move any further towards the back bunk area. We'll take a little bit of a moment here to speak of your stereo and your TV and your fireplace. The stereo here is a two zone system, meaning that you can listen to your music in two different zones. Zone one being inside the RV and zone two being the speakers that I showed you previously outside underneath your awning. As well as the dual zones, this particular stereo has HDMI, Bluetooth and auxiliary connectivity, as well as USB charging capabilities. If we slide over just to our right here and shed some light on the situation, you will notice that we have this button here to switch you between your antenna and cable TV. At the moment, the light is over here on the right. That would indicate it is ready for cable. And if I press this, it'll switch to the left, which would indicate it's ready for antenna. What this is, is a signal booster, which will boost the signal of your antenna. However, that boost in the signal will interfere with your receiver, or will interfere with the satellite or uh, cable signal. So in order to watch cable or satellite, it's important to make sure it is on the cable setting. Take a second to talk about your fireplace. It's pretty self-explanatory on how it actually functions. You have power, you have the uh, lighting changes you can make as well as intensity changes and uh, as far as uh, the flame height and then you have your actual temperature settings. 
the most important thing to note is on a 30 amp RV such as this you are unable to run everything all at once so what they do is they force you to switch between your hot water tank on electricity and your fireplace if you need to use your water heater you will switch between your water heater and your fireplace with this switch here so if you find one or the other isn't working just look over here and see if this could be the the culprit now directly above this and just inside the door we have your little command center here we have your indication panel that will give you the levels of your batteries your fresh and black water and gray water tanks as well as we have the switching to turn your water heater on for gas and electric and your water pump as well. If you're looking to draw from your fresh water tank or winterize the RV, you'll need to utilize the water pump on board. Directly below that, we have awning lights and the main lights of the RV, as well as switching to extend and retract your awning and the kitchen or dinette slide here as well. So let's make our way towards the back bunk area and on the way we'll stop and talk about your refrigerator. This refrigerator will operate in three modes. A straight electricity mode where it'll only run off electricity right now and that's 120 volt electricity not uh, battery power. And you can see that the red light comes on to indicate it did not work. That's because I'm running off battery power at the moment. Uh, we can also run a uh, light or run the refrigerator off of uh, propane, which it is doing so now. Uh, if I had the bottles turned off or we were out of propane, it would attempt to light. It will attempt it actually three times before it stops and doesn't try to light again. To help prevent that from happening, kind of bleed some of the air and build up the pressure by lighting the range first, like I uh, had mentioned earlier. Uh, if this was unable to light, which it lit just fine, um, then you would notice that there would be a flashing light here to indicate that it did not light. And the third way for it to run is on auto, which will automatically choose between electricity or um, propane, choosing electricity automatically if it is available. So as I make my way towards the back bedroom here, we'll make note of your thermostat. This uses a capacitive touch button, which means is there's no, not a mechanical depression of the button needed. It's a very light touch to cycle through your options. You basically hit the power button lightly to cycle through your, your fan settings and you can switch it with the arrows at the side to high, low or auto fan. If you keep it on auto, then that will ensure that the AC uh, fan does not turn on when you're trying to run your furnace. If you put it on low or high fan, however, you will also use the AC fan. So we have cool and heat options as well. Take a quick little look at your bathroom here. We have a switch to work the lighting. Most notable thing in here, other than the uh, lovely aesthetic, is the GFCI. This is the GFCI for the unit. Everything on the load side of this receptacle will not be functioning if this GFCI is tripped. You can do it manually here to test the system. I can't right now because we don't actually have any 120 volt power. We're running off battery as I mentioned. And then you can reset the system via this here. Now if this is tripped and needs to be reset, some of the symptoms you might notice would be uh, anything on the load side not functioning. So this plug wouldn't work. Uh, any receptacle near water, so in counter plugs in the kitchen, and any uh, receptacles outside. So if any of those aren't working, or if all of those aren't working, then there's a good bet that it is this. I would come in here and hit this black button right here to reset the system and see if that helps. So we back out of there before we head into that bunk. The last stop on the tour is the inside portion of your hot water tank. You can see we have one, two valves here. Those valves are utilized in order to switch you between winterization or winter mode or bypass the water heater mode and summer mode. Summer mode, we want the water heater to be in use. So we would direct these valves to this position, both pointing towards the tank. That means water is gonna flow in and flow out. However, if we're winterizing, we want to do the opposite and we'll put it back to this. 
where the water flows around here and bypasses hot water tank because we don't need to fill your water tank full of antifreeze. All right, stand up and make your way into the back here. Make a note of your switching for the extension retraction of the bunk slide. You'll notice we have in here, you have the kind of J-cube uh, cushions. These can be moved around and reconfigured. You can move these, they can fold out. You can kind of put them in any, uh, any manner that you wish. The bunk here can be lifted and locked into place via this and this on either end. And in this bunk area, we also have an emergency exit. That can be utilized via one, two red tabs. You open those, there's no screen at all on this one, nice and simple, just flip the back handle here on these tabs up. They will release the window and you can escape to safety. In this back bedroom, you'll see that we have a connection point right here for cable and satellite output, as well as 120 volt power, so you can mount or place a TV here. We also have this handy little ladder that can be lifted up and then gently lowered down to give you a little bit of a, a ladder or stair access to this top bunk. One of the last things I'll talk about is the AC itself. You'll see that the inside portion of this AC has these baffles right here. With the baffles open and the AC running, the majority of the cool air will fall right here in the main area of the RV. However, if you close those baffles, it will block the air from falling here and the air will fall from these ports located in various parts throughout the RV. That concludes our virtual orientation of your new RV. I hope you found our little tour here helpful. I hope it helps you out. I hope it makes you just a little bit more comfortable to go out and use your RV for the first time. And again, if there's anything that I missed or didn't cover that you would have liked to see, give us a call and we will do our best to answer all your questions. Thank you very much.